day one of the yellow book escape readathon um i have not checked instagram i have not done anything today i'm now gonna sit down and start reading a song below water i probably should um check out what some of the prompts are so i completely forgot to actually like speak about my thoughts on the books so i'm just going to leave the links in the description and give you a quick one down i finished a song below water that one took me most of the week um just because that was the only physical book that i actually read uh -oh. <laughs> i did get some footage of me talking about while reading but honestly i cringed a little too hard to keep them in so i just i personally have not read a lot of books with people of color or any different ethnicities you could tell that this was written by a fellow black woman this is a real character i felt connected but in a way that i was able to acknowledge my differences without them being like ridiculously different and offensively different i think this one is more of a three stars for me but after i read it i definitely would have rated it a four stars so I definitely think that I could reread it and I really enjoyed the fair aspect of things. Um, the ending of the book, I was very surprised and I really enjoyed it. I was almost guessing. I was like, oh, I'll go sit outside and it'll be cute. It's so windy. So Kim Ji-young, born in 1982, and A Song Below Water are the two books that I plan on reading this week. Um, and I'll let you know how I feel about them. I don't know why I'm stressing. While I cook dinner, I will talk to you about the audiobook that I had started ages ago. It's definitely a like slice of life kind of story. I don't think that it's something that everyone would enjoy, but I think it's important to read books like these. A fucking wasp attacked me earlier today. I need my face in this. I still want my face because I'm short. This looks disgusting. I don't think I'm gonna like this cheese, but we're giving it a try. Because how are you supposed to know if you don't like things if you don't give them a try? My camera died while I was talking, but uh, basically Kim Ji-yeon, born in 1982, is like a popular, was kind of a controversial book in South Korea back in the day, and it's pretty much just like telling a story of her life. Um, it was controversial because it was known as a feminist novel, maybe because it's actually from the perspective of a woman who's like, hey, I'm being mistreated. Um, honestly, I forget that places, like, I'm literally from such a place of privilege. I was born in a house of all girls, so women were in charge. Um, you know, I was born in a situation where not only am I white, but I also was born in a house full of girls. So it's kind of one of those things, ooh, it's kind of one of those things where like reading this, I'm really like, holy shit, this is so different to my personal experience that I'm getting mad at it. And it's just her normal life, like it's a normal thing. So like talking about periods and stuff and like keeping that a secret and that it's like a no-no thing. Well, that like people threw parties for women when they got their periods. I'm like, that's fucking weird. I don't want to celebrate it, but I also am not ashamed of it. Like it's just a fact of life and little things like that um discussions of sexual assault and how as a woman she was ashamed <sighs> anyway i don't want to go on a tangent um i tried that halloumi cheese i think that's how you pronounce it and that shit's fucking good so i've got like a coleslaw mix going on this looks disgusting in here but it's like a um, lettuce some carrot and shit we got the halloumi cheese and we got some beetroot and now I'm about to chuck in some lentils, but um, we're sprinkling some of that on. And when it gets all mixed up with the sauce, I reckon it's gonna be delicious. So that's my food. And I think like, honestly, I'm reading this book and I was like, I don't, I started off like, I don't understand why this is a feminist novel. 
because it's just like a woman's experience as a woman but then i guess that does inherently make it feminist because it is a female's experience that's a lot different in south korea than it is over here in australia and that's probably why it was such a huge thing back then like back in the day it was like you know one of those like holy shit this is a thing but like all I want in my life is to be associated and around people who care about other people's experiences. It's so draining to be around people who just don't un don't care to understand. There's one thing to be ignorant and not know, but are willing to learn, and then there's another thing to be like, just nope, your experience is different to mine, so it's therefore wrong. I made too much lentils and I don't know what to do with them now. I also have more beetroot, but like, I can put it in a sandwich, I don't know. Disgusting in that part. Now I'm gonna chuck in some of the noodles and the sauce. The reason I wanted to read this is because I, those of you who don't know, I really, really like K pop and K dramas and shit like that. And in all honesty, the only way I can learn more about Korean culture. And behaviors and stuff like that would be to read more literature this one was actually one of the books that rm from bts had recommended i wasn't going to mention that this was a bts recommendation but like also why not everyone likes bts now so you know it's interesting to see what some people read and i like that i kind of want to do more I kind of want to do it more often where like I read books that are recommended by celebrities or like, you know, in TV shows when they like read a bunch of books. Like I feel like that'd be really cool to like find out more about characterizations and stuff like that through their book recommendations. Um, that's not an original idea. I watch YouTubers who have done that before. Yeah. Ew. I like, I got my hair did and I have not... I should have known that I would not be asked to ever do it, so it just is always going to permanently look like trash because I just don't care about my appearance. I just finished the audiobook for um, Kim Ji Young, born in 1982. Some of the conversations that they were having about like workforce shit and like how drinking is such a prevalent thing. Yeah on the wear force was just very interesting and eye-opening for me to see because like that's obviously not a thing as frequently like I don't go out drinking with people from work, co-workers from work so I don't know just that's interesting to me but like I don't know during the whole time it was just very chill um little things that would like piss me off but it sounded like just mundane like mom shit like things that as a woman that people experience. Um, I think it was really interesting the commentary on like, you know, what do you get to give up? I have to lose my job, I have to um, basically put my body through torture. <laughs> um, I have to hold this fucking kid and then I have to cook clean and do all that when your significant other is the one working and making the money. There's actually talk a lot about, there's a line in there that I can't think of off the top of my head. How women are expected to do so much, yet are constantly shamed for how much or how little they do. Um, it's like you can never win. It's like if you wanted someone to brighten the room, you should buy a lamp. And I was like, oh, that's funny. Hee 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 hee. Um, I think now as time has gone on people have realised more that there's not one specific thing that makes a woman a woman. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. It's a good book. Like, I do recommend it in the sense that like it's something that probably could be studied in school, um, especially with such a large impact that it had. But I don't know if you're not interested in like day-to-day -day mundane sort of memoir type things then I don't recommend this for you. Anyway I'm going to bed because I'm rambling and it's 1.30 so good night. So I'm not going to give a rating to someone's personal story. The last audiobook that I read that I haven't really talked about 
at all. I don't have much blog footage. I didn't actually talk about this book at all. And this book is called Busy as Fuck. And I was like very, very, very motivated after reading this. Um, as someone who isn't necessarily physically busy, Hello, I'm in the mood for bacon again. So I, I'm gonna, I just did my, finished doing my makeup. The camera died when I was doing it. It looks kind of bad, but like also not terrible in filters. <laughs> That's how you know your makeup's like, all right, is that way if it looks good in a filter, you're fine. So I'm really tempted to give myself an eyebrow slit. Like, do I just go full gay and just do it? We love not seeing my face, just my belly. <laughs> There's like, I woke up to, drama about Woojin from Stray Kids, well, ex-member of Stray Kids, of finding out people that I like are predators. We just love that for me. Also, that shit that I made yesterday, so good. That was delicious. Um, so for me, I'm more mentally busy than I am physically busy. And this book, although not like, it doesn't really suit my lifestyle or say like, my age group it definitely allowed me to sort of have a different perspective on the type of person that i am when it comes to dealing with stress and also what the type of person i am when it comes to my busyness and how i try and put a lot more pressure on myself um, to be productive i think this book definitely talked about the words like productive and why is that something that we rate our value on that I'm currently listening to, which is kind of funny because I'm depressed and I'm not doing anything busy. And it's from the Scratch collection, so I'm pretty sure they have like DVDs and stuff like that as well. Um, we have a DVD one out in the lounge room that we have not crossed off anything <laughs> in a while. <laughs> so yeah, that's starting to scratch some shit off, I guess. And it's important to sort of give myself time to just sit and reflect and i even like after while listening to that audiobook and stuff like that i was like coming home from work and i like opened my curtains and i like looked up at the stars to try and calm my body down i meditated a bit and i like but overall this book like i said i don't really like writing memoirs or uh, self-help books but i think listening to it like as an audiobook definitely changed my way of consuming memoirs and audiobooks of course, now I'm back in my little bit of a slump and I'm not feeling as productive or as good. And I think that's where I need to start listening to more podcasts and more self-help audiobooks because I do personally need that little bit of help. 